So we've got this, and with CG renders, they tend to come out quite sharp. So it's always good to just drop down a blur node. And um, in this case, we just want to blur a couple of pixels to take that kind of perfection off of it. So it's, it feels less CG. So that's probably a little bit too much blurring, but maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.8, just softening the image a little bit. Um, it's just a nice way to help it you know, feel a bit more organic rather than this kind of ultra sharp, unrealistic render sort of thing. So that's the first step. And then what we want to do is add a an exponential glow to our scene. So this, this will kind of simulate these hot spots um, of light. So let's throw one of those down. Uh, expo glow, fast expo glow I'm looking for. This is one of the ones from the reactor. So let's read this in, take a look. This is essentially a bunch of nodes combined. So you'll see that it takes a second to calculate and the gain is far too high, so let's just drop it way back. Just a little bit. So you see it's just brightened the image, it's given these hot spots. But we don't want it, we don't want it to push too far really. We want to just be very subtle because we're gonna layer this kind of effect up. So let's try 0.4. Yeah, maybe maybe 0.4 will do the job for now. So that's that's looking good. We were in a good place. Maybe if we just drop the glow radius a little bit, just see what that does. Maybe it's a bit too harsh. Just a tiny bit tweaking it. And actually zooming in, I think the blur might be a tad too strong as well. So let's just drop it back to like 0.3. It's not having a super strong effect, but it's just something. So now we've got this far. Let's drop down a CCV. If you type CCV, it comes up with color curves. This is a nice way for us to sort of create some nice interest using some curves. You know, we can create an S curve or whatever to really um, enhance the contrast or whatever. So let's just drop that in a little bit, dial in sort of a look. So that's looking interesting. Let's give the, the highlights a, a bit more of a punch maybe. Something like that. I can see we've got some funny colors appearing in the background. It might be with our um, color corrector for the, the atmosphere. It might have pushed it a little bit too far. So let's just dial that back a little bit. Just see what's happening. So yeah, we want to be careful with those curves. We don't want to push too far with that. So just increasing the contrast a tad maybe drop this a bit so yeah that's it, you and we can again you can layer color curves up um to to help sort of dial in your look so um i think maybe if we just throw down another color correct and tweak a couple more settings just to to get this this looking right i think maybe if we at this stage i feel that if we just drop the saturation just a tiny bit 0.9 maybe and then we'll add a little back in in a moment so now we've done a couple of color adjustments let's sort of work in our lens effects so simulate a camera sort of thing so the first thing i want to do is create some chromatic aberrations so let's chop down and XF Chroma Fuse, another one from the reactor. So this, if we pub in the effect, should be quite obvious or not. Let's dial in. So yeah, look, this is, it creates some chromatic aberration. We don't want it to be that strong. We want it to be really mild. So maybe 0.1, even that might be too strong. I mean, it's quite obvious on the edges, you can see, but uh, maybe 0 0.0, 0 0.8, just kind of like a, slight lens effect there we'll leave it at that for now that's just something a bit of interest and then we want some grain you know we want some kind of this organic feel that this is shot on a camera sort of thing so let's throw down a film grain node and 
and pipe that in take a look and the grain is terrible so the first thing we want to do is just reduce the size of that grain really fine grain we want really let's go like 0.2 maybe even finer than that 0.1 yeah and then the strength we don't want it to be too strong it's too grainy um let's halve it 0 0.05 yeah something like that um at the moment it just it's just applying grain uniformly across the image um that's not necessarily quite the a realistic way to do it so you could uh let's say you wanted to only have grain in, in the shadows or in the highlights or whatever let's say you want that let's throw down a, a bitmap and feed in the previous node and have a look and then change the channel to luminance and then just dial in the shadows and the highlights a bit just so we get that contrast and in, in, with this the light areas will be where the grain appears so if we grab our mask arrow and mask our grain effect with that and view what we've done you'll see it's all the highlight areas that are getting the, the grain and then if we go to sort of a mid tones to shadows you'll see that there's not much going on and if, if you invert the bitmap um, click the invert then you need, all of that is gone from the highlights but you're getting it in the shadows so that's a way to control where you've got it if you want to but let's just leave it uniform for now and get rid of that so we just got a uniform grain going on so that's looking quite cool um, and now we're getting towards the end of you know the, the this this how we're getting the image to look but we want it to have you know this it's kind of like a a nice low sun in the sky we can see casting shadows so we want to just punch up that sun effect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a a, a group of nodes to achieve this um so the first one will be hotspot and this if we feed this in we'll see what this does immediately just creates this sort of area of bright light or but it dodges the image basically and we want this to be quite large so let's just increase the hotspot size let's move it a little bit up the image that looks terrible right now but what we're going to do is just reduce the primary strength by a great deal so we want to just have it to say so it looks something like point 0.1 what I've got here um, and this is just going to help make this part of the image a bit punchier. And then uh, on top of that, what we'll do is to then just now, because be, as you remember, we'll, we went into our um, our color correct and color curves. We took a bit of the saturation out, etc. Well, now we want to just um, dial that in a little bit more with another curves node now that we've got to this stage. so let's go ahead and do that so what we want to do is create um, a color curves node and pipe that in and in this one again I just want to keep it quite simple I'm just going to drop the shadows a little bit just create that contrast here and then I want to create one more and this one's to be going to be to just kind of give us our a bit more of a, a look to the image so like a, a more a tealy kind of feeling to it so let's turn off um, the green channel and let's dial the red down so turn off the blue as well dial the red down just a tiny bit very small movements with this something like that and then turn that off go to the blue channel and the blue channel we just want to take this the the highlights and just punch them up just a tiny tiny bit and then maybe down in the lower re the, the the sort of more the shadowy areas it's just oh, you see you gotta be really careful with this just push it back a little bit let's see what that looks like compared yeah so we've just pushed those those colors that sort of tealy kind of color in there just a little bit so a small tweak but just helps us get that look in there and now 
let's just finish off with a couple of tricks. So the first one I want to show you is using a gradient. So if we create a background, type in BG and the background will come up and just view that in the viewport. If we change it to gradient, one end of the gradient, we want to be quite a dark color, dark shadowy kind of cool blue. So uh, maybe let's push that more towards the teal, sort of a really dark, yeah, something like that. And then the lighter end, we want this to be a nice sunny, goldeny kind of color. So something like, let's push it more towards the red, get a bit more orange. Something, yeah, something, something like this is good. Um, and then let's change the gradient type to uh, radial and actually we're going to want to swap the ends of these colors actually so that yep and move this to where our sun kind of our hot spot would have been in our image and what we'll do is we'll merge this in with a merge node so let's take the background and the foreground and merge this in and as you can see it's just sort of overwritten it entirely but we'll change our blend um, our blend node our blend mode we want to change to I think screen will be a good actually perhaps overlay screen it is let's change it to screen And it's kind of a little bit overpowering at the moment, so um, perhaps we can control the effect a little bit with our bitmap. So let's dial it in a bit with using luminance in the bitmap node. So chuck down a bitmap, break the connection, and we're going to use our existing image, change the channel to luminance, and let's. push our shadows a little bit and so if we feed our mask you can see we've got the effect but it's not kind of going over the entire image but it's a nice nice effect it just gives us this warmer glow here um, makes it a bit cooler over here so that's a, a nice way to sort of push the image and you could make it punchier um, and in fact perhaps that's what we could do but first if we throw down one more um, node to help us simulate our lens, it will be a lens distort node. And this, if we feed this in, you'll see what this does. Just add a little bit of um, lens distortion, essentially. So if we change the mode back to distort, because by default it's undistort, and, um, and then go to our lens distortion model, if we increase our... Um, not a curvature rather, if we increase our distortion we want to go into minus numbers just a little bit, just yeah I mean something like that, just a very subtle bit of distortion around the edges it kind of goes hand in hand with the chromatic aberration we were doing um, so it's a subtle effect and you know you, you probably could do without it but it just again it just layers up these little effects that simulates a lens so Lens Distort is another nice one for that. And then finally, I think perhaps one final node, not necessarily um, needed, but let's throw down one more um, curves and just experiment just to see if we can squeeze a bit more out of the image perhaps. So let's just see what happens if we really push the, the values. I mean, some of this is a little bit too far. I just want to see what we get. Um, perhaps that's too much, but if we have the infusion actually, um, you have the, the main um, sort of node here, but if you go to the right, you've got to have this cog next to a screen. If you click that, then most nodes have this. They have like a bled mode. So we could just dial in an effect that we've got just very subtly. So something like that. That's a, a good, I think we've got the image to a good place. And now all we need to do is just prepare it for rendering so it's as simple as throwing down like it like in nuke you just throw down a it won't be a right node it's a right node in nuke in fusion it's called a saver saver node so we just want to choose where we're going to save it 
I've got I've already um, created a folder for Garpa level called comp and in that folder you just want to save for example I've got it saving as TGAs now I recommend saving as TGAs you could save it's good to save it as a high quality format so you know you want to save it either either DPX or TGAs or TIFFs something along those lines I think uh, TGAs are a good sort of um, middle ground it depends um, what you're going to be doing with it afterwards but in this case what we will do is we will save this out as TGAs um, you want to write in your you want to write in your um, your file name and underscore and then dot TGA and um, and then when we write this out we'll write out the TGAs initially from Fusion and then we'll take the TGAs and in Fusion we can convert them to ProRes so we'll take the TGAs convert them to ProRes and then you can take them into a an editor DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or um, Final Cut whatever so that's how we'll finalize our, our shot so uh, let's go ahead and render this um, if you press render then you'll um, just put in your frame range and you want this to be set to high quality I think it's set as a default um, uh, so you want it to be the final high quality and if you click start render it'll go through your 120 frames and and then we'll go to the next lesson where we'll just quickly talk about how we'll convert this to ProRes and we'll wrap up the lesson. So let's go ahead and render.